as I as I look for information all the time, I'm amazed. And I am you've left me almost speechless, Marnie, because you have a book that has fifteen thousand five hundred and fifty-five terms. Fifteen thousand terms, over yeah. fifteen thousand terms and phrases on domestic violence, narcissistic abuse, and parental alienation. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this before. This is a one of a kind book. The book is entitled True Deceit, False Love. True Deceit, False Love. Uh, this book has uh, been welcomed and uh, endorsed by a number of well-known individuals mm -hmm. and uh, respected individuals. Um, Marnie, how did, you, how did you come up with this book of over 15,000 terms? Well, you know, it, it was uh, a very healing process that actually took years um, of almost every day writing down different terms and phrases. You know, when you realize that, you know, you are a victim of domestic violence, when you escape an abuser, and you try to come to terms, no pun intended, but if you try to come to understand what you've gone through, um, you know, one way to cope is to research and, and you know, seek out um, what happened to you, you know, read about domestic violence, read about parental alienation, watch some YouTube videos, tune into podcasts like yours and you know you find that terms are thrown around and you may know some of them some make sense but some are terms that you really have never heard of before but you um you know it's probably part of your whole experience so mm -hmm. early on i would say um you know after i escaped the abuser and you know i and then when I really kind of hit a very tough point, when I realized parental alienation of an adult child mm. was part of my abuse, I really was trying to seek out, how do you survive this? How do you cope? And so I would learn about these terms and I would just, you know, um, when I would listen to something, I would just have a, a pad of paper by my, um, computer or phone or whatever. And I would write down some of these terms to kind of look up later on just to okay. say, hey, they mentioned they mentioned things like stonewalling or scapegoat mm -hmm. or golden child or, um, you know, gray rocking, no right. contact. I mean, some of them, you know, I, okay, no contact. That makes sense. Don't have yeah. contact with your abuser. But yeah. there's a lot more to actually all of these terms. And so I would write them down almost to have like a running list that I would go mm -hmm. and look up at a later, later time. And, you know, I thought, wow, these terms are, are important to know, um, especially because they are used a lot by, by professionals and everyday mm -hmm. people that have experienced, you know, um, this type of domestic violence. And, and so I thought, wow, it would be neat to put together, you know, a book, you know, a yeah. guide for mm -hmm. people. Um, originally, I thought, you know, it'd be nice to have a glossary so I could like look up one term and, and then have a definition. But then I found there were so many definitions for every term. Different people have different takes wow. on the yeah. definitions. There's not just one definition. Right. Um, and so, and, and I saw that there were some podcasters that would even highlight some of the terms saying, okay, we will talk about, um, you know, this particular term today or something. And anyway, the list just kept growing and growing. Originally, I thought, oh, I might have a hundred words. I mean, that would be a lot for a book, a well, hundred terms. Yeah, that would be a lot. It would be a lot, but then it just kept on going and going. And then I realized, mm -hmm. you know, there are different tenses to the terms, you know, so, um, you know, brainwashing is an active term where brainwashed is they were already brainwashed. They were already, okay. you know, um, I could see that or a brainwasher is someone who is actively engaging and trying to 
give a false narrative, you know, half truths, fake, you know, lies, that type of thing. So anyway, because I, I wanted to include the different tenses of some of these, um, the list just kept on growing and growing. And, you know, I would say that I really worked on this book for about five years and wow. I had spiral notebook notebooks everywhere just with terms and and then I decided at some point I got super motivated um I I waited until my first book which was a spiritual fiction you know that's w- which we talked about last time yeah. we, we met mm-hmm. was God came to my garage sale I waited until that was out and doing well and I thought I'm going to focus on this other book I always knew I wanted it to be called Called true deceit, false love. And so I, I knew that. And, but then it, you know, just did all the creative process um, just kind of took over and I've made this into, it's going to be a four book series called true deceit, okay. false love. But um, with the first book that's out now, it's out on Amazon. It's out on Balboa press. Soon it'll be on Barnes and Noble. Um, so it's out with a list of all of these terms and it was very well received, like you said, by some respected individuals in the narcissistic, you know, domestic abuse recovery community, because they were like, wow, you know, we've never seen this before. And it's great to have a list of all these terms in one place. And, and even the, the person who wrote my forward, which is uh, Dr. Sam Beck, and he, he even commended me on not giving any um, definitions because um, we all, as part of our healing, you know, need to put the pieces of the puzzle together. And while we're doing research and reading and we connect the dots to our own experiences, it makes it much more um, personal and real and healing for us. So it's a combination of reading the the terms, which will provide validation, but it will also encourage you to kind of you know, look up the various definitions and see how it relates okay. to your own experience. So 15,555 proves to be what you, that was your stopping point. I mean, that's what you gathered. That's what you gathered. Was there more? Oh, there's tons more. I so was gonna, I was so here, here is yeah, the Let's book. take a look at that. Hold that up yeah, for a second. Yeah, yeah. Here, here. There you are, right, the right in there. Can you see it like that? Whoa. Yep, that's, that's good. We, we, okay. got, we got a copy, uh, cover. Uh, the cover of the book will look like that. Everyone will need to please go out and get your copy. Add some clarity uh, to what you're going through by getting this book, True Deceit, False Love. Uh, they can find it at Amazon, uh, other places? They can or? find it on Amazon and Balboa Press, which okay. is a division of Hay House, as well as Barnes and & Noble. And the book retails for $15.55. All right, Kinda everybody put, put your pizza, put, everybody put the pizza down. <laughs> For one week out of a month, you owe it to yourself to get clarity. Put the pizza down and get a book. And if you got extra, get a book and get one for your friend. But go ahead. You were saying? Well, and it's also in an e version for three dollars oh, and ninety nine cents. So you, if right. you wanted, instant there's a whole bunch. Of, there's a whole bunch you can get for the price of a pizza right there. there yeah, definitely. Right there. Definitely. Okay. Now, but um, you were going to say something else. Please go ahead. Um, well, I, but I was just going to say this. This book has is really been healing for me, and it's you know, people that I have reached out to felt this is something that is needed um, because there are so many terms, you know, discussed Um, the healing from narcissistic abuse or parental alienation or any different of the many types of domestic violence is such a process. It's not just like um, easy to overcome. It is a process and it takes years and, and, a lot of that is because of like one of the terms is gaslighting. You have been as, as a victim and hopefully on your way to being a survivor or a thriver, right, right. Mm-hmm. you know, you have been gaslit to believe that you're not good enough, that you're, you're not capable. You're, you, you know, you used to be intelligent, but now you might be struggling and, you know, so, and, and, and they, they make you feel, the abusers make you feel like you're not looking at things the way they really are, even though you really do need to trust your judgment and give yourself credit for, yeah, you experienced 
what you experienced or you saw what you saw. They will flat out even lie and say, you know, no, I, I was not with that other woman. And I, mm-hmm. and I could say, well, I saw you. I, mm-hmm. no, no, you must have been mistaken. You know, th- that I mean, they, they just play mind games with you. And so that's right. part of the process. It takes a long time to regain, you know, your own faith in yourself. Because the reality of actually seeing someone, catching someone doing what's wrong, that is the abuser, the narcissist, the toxic person, they flip it so that you're the crazy person. Right. We're, yeah. we're the person that you didn't see it right. You didn't hear it right. That's not what happened. I was never there. I never did that. I never said that. Right. Was, or or just, if I, I said just, that, you're... If I said that you took it wrong, the way you interpreted it is wrong. The way you wrong. interpret it, yeah. yeah. I, they say, I hate you. No, you interpreted that wrong. I was right, just right. saying I hated a certain thing that you do. I don't hate you. You know, they twist it in a word salad kind of a way. Definitely. Word salad is one of the, the terms in there. In fact, projection is another term. They are masters at projecting. Um, they will accuse you mm-hmm. of doing something that they are doing. So, for example, an abuser could be forging documents, okay. but they will accuse you of forging documents when you would never forge a document. I mean, that's it wouldn't even it wouldn't even cross your mind. Yeah. And and so they put put ideas in, you know, what, what they're doing. They almost tell on themselves. If you really listen to what they're saying, they're basically telling you, I did this. Um, you know, there's, there was one abuser that, that even when he was sharing something with his lawyer or someone, I don't know, said something like, well, I wouldn't be surprised if, if my wife didn't accuse me of sexually abusing the children. And you're thinking, who says something like that? Who would ever think of something like that? Right. But they they did. But but they they thought thought of it. And then the scary thing is, is that. And it may not come out for years and years and years, but maybe they did sexually abuse the kids and, you know, you were oblivious to it, but they turn things around. The projection and the gaslighting leads to just like cognitive dissonance, which is, you know, yet another term that we, you know, we, we, we're thinking, but it's, it's just, we're confused and it just, something doesn't seem right. Mm -hmm. And, and I would say, when something just doesn't seem right, you know, that should be a red flag and you should pay attention to these feelings because something probably isn't right. But it, we are notorious empaths, good people, honest people. Um, we believe that the people we marry or surround ourselves with, you know, um, even people we have known for years, like a best friend we have known for years, we believe in our minds that they are good people, that they have the the best intentions, they would never Mm -hmm. harm us, you know, um, they would never lie. But then, you know, we find out that's not always true, that, that there are people that do take advantage of our good nature. So we should listen to that aspect that feeling, that thought, something's off here. Right. Now, we may not want to because we're hoping and wanting, desiring the best out of that relationship. Sure. But we may need to be mindful uh, to kind of go with that. Because if we're dealing with an abuser or a narcissistic person, they're not going to be open to a discussion with that feeling if we have it, right? They don't well, they will never that. acknowledge their role in anything. They'll just project it onto you that you've done something wrong. Um, we're, but overre- yeah, we're, years overreacting. Years. we're overreacting. We're, we're, oh, we're yeah. taking it the wrong way. What's we're wrong too sensitive. Too sensitive. Yeah, that's what I was trying to think of. Yeah. You're too sen- You're reading too much into yep. this. Yep. Get over it. You know, nothing was meant by what I said. And, you know, but the thing is also, sometimes we are also too busy in our lives. We're very busy raising the family, working full time, just mm-hmm. whatever we're doing that we, mm-hmm. we don't take the time to really put the pieces of, of the puzzle together, like, um, and, and, figure it out. If I would have done that, I might have left a lot earlier than 27 years after, you know, 
and, almost, and then almost, you find that's almost, three, that's almost three decades. <laughs> that's De- almost well, three decades with somebody who really didn't have your best interest at heart. Ultimately, and actually, actually, you know, people might find that their own family members are abusive. That's, that's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing more of that uh, on my show. But go ahead. You were going to say. Yeah, or or even a friendship. You know, yep. um, mm-hmm. I I've had to be more discerning about who I let in my life and who I keep in my life. Um, mm-hmm. You know, a very painful situation emotionally for me to step away from a friendship. But I knew I had to because of the, the differences in values, you know, where I value honesty and goodness, yeah. um, you know, th- that wasn't the case for, you know, like a best friend and, and, and when you've been lied to and, and betrayed, yeah. it's at some point, you've got to really pay attention to that and make a choice. Do I stay in this and work on it and talk with this person? Or is it better for me to just just move on because I really know what I'm dealing with now. You know, mm-hmm. after after you get more and more experience, you start, you know, um, it's harder to trust. It's harder to just uh, reach out and let people into your life. Yeah, and that becomes a common theme of harder to trust and and uh, challenging, difficult to let others back into that intimate inner circle of our life our private life uh, because of the abuser. Uh, right. But, yeah. Uh, that's something, you know what we, we need to, we need to talk about that. Maybe the next, maybe the next one, we're going to break that down some more because a sure. lot of people, good people uh, have uh, put up a wall to the point that they feel it's not worth it to be hurt again. Uh, right. And, and to open up their heart again. Uh, you were going to say something, then I'm going to talk more about. Well, I was going to say, you know, as hard as all of this is, mm-hmm. uh, these lessons in life that we are learning, and you know, um, we can have a myriad of emotions as far as we could feel like, why me? What, what did I do to deserve this? Or you, you know, some people might feel revenge or anger. You know, I always chose, I'm not a revengeful angry person. I'm basically a happy person who looks at situations as life lessons. But so in some ways, as as really malevolent as some of these Mm -hmm. abusers are, they really did you a favor. I mean, that really could be a blessing in disguise. Because without that, you know, you might have just been going along and putting up with you know, not being respected or loved for the person that you are, and you could have been stifling your life or, you know, and eventually, you know, abuse can lead to physical ailments and, you know, emotional, being emotionally distraught and all sorts of things that can affect your future and your decisions. So uh, in many ways, yeah, I thank the abusers. I thank the Mm -hmm. negative people in my life um, because they helped me open my eyes to, to confirm what my values are and, and w- how I want to conduct myself. So, so really abusers can be blessings in disguise. I, although it would be nice if we didn't have to learn lessons the hard way, but <laughs> okay. you know, so that's there, was, there was a moment that you were dealing with the abuser that maybe you didn't feel the way you do right now because of trying to understand what was going on, but eventually you got to this point or Mm -hmm. was it from the very beginning you recognized, okay, this is going to turn out good. No, no, I think nothing happens right away. I think it's, everything is really a process. I mean, it took me 27 years and a defining moment when really everything came together. And I was like, I, this person is, is evil and, and is doing some pretty bad things, illegal, immoral, you know, um, I, I, I just, uh, there was a defining moment where, where the light bulb really went on, and, but it took years to look back at say, wow, I remember before we got married, that those were red flags and that wow. a lot of people I know 
would wow. never have put up with that, you know, and yeah. gone on. But I was blinded, as many of us are. We we go along thinking it's going to get better, hoping it's going to get better, thinking that you can, you know, find some kind of common ground, you know, looking at the positives outweigh the negatives, yeah. you know, making those choices. And mm-hmm. and I stayed and, and, you know, I don't know, I... I believe in many ways, God has a plan. I believe that we have free will and we make our own choices. But, you know, if I would have left my abuser when her kids were minors, when they were young, that would have been even maybe more detrimental to them, more damaging to the children. Um, It would have been years and years of experiences and, you know, beautiful parent-child bond and love that could have been erased. Um, and knowing the abuser like I do and, and his need for the courtroom drama, you know, just the chaos and, and the, the vindictive, you know, obsession with, with trying to, you know, um, destroy me, the revenge, yeah. you know, it's so, so he would have been probably even worse if our children were younger because these abusers, they've got like a false mask. That's why I have on all four of the books in this true deceit, false love um, yeah. series, they all have a picture of a person with a mask you know, covering their face um, and then a mask slipping because, you know, they want the public. They have like a public persona. Many of these people are top CEOs, presidents of the company. Um, They can be top leaders in churches and schools and and Mm -hmm. they can even be um, leaders of social welfare organizations, you know, so outwardly they look like they're doing good for humanity, but they're really using that. Uh, venue as as an opportunity to get the supply that they need, which is usually having a lot of people look up to him, uh, you know, being in charge of a, a lot of people making decisions, you know, being the CEO, the boss man, the the top dog. Mm-hmm. And and so they are well respected oftentimes in their communities, but behind closed doors, they really are a different person. And and but they don't show that to the, to the general public. So, so you are discounted yet again, like in the neighborhood, for example, you know, your neighbors that you might've known for years and years and years have nothing to do with you. Once you leave the abuser and your house goes in foreclosure and, you know, you, you have to leave, um, you would think you would still have some relationships with some people, but the abuser is really good at getting to these people may, many times years and years before the breakup. You know, they've, they, they are setting the stage. They're always calculating and manipulating the scenarios and, and the truths. Mm-hmm. And so that's been going on for years. And, and then people will say, well, that person is such a pillar of the community, such an upstanding person. They mm-hmm. would never do anything wrong. So it must be this other person, even though they can't really think of anything negative that you know the the victim ever did but you know they twist the stories around it's it's just kind of what they do to make themselves to build themselves up I mean they really are very you know calculating people I was gonna say you sound like you described what I'm about to read that you're well notice this this is uh you you already know what this says to a measured degree uh, but it reads this way on the back of your book Dr. Marnie Hill uh, Vadero is an award-winning and celebrated author, speaker, and educator. She, of course, I'm talking about you, earned her doctorate in education and completed postdoctoral studies at Harvard after a very successful and rewarding 35-year career as a high school special education teacher with 12 years as a university adjunct professor. She is a lover of animals, nature, music, and world travel, and handles life's challenges with love and compassion. It's a beautiful picture of you, too, by the way. Oh, thanks. She values honesty, integrity, equality, and goodness, and prays for peace on earth. In addition to her speaking engagements and various writing endeavors on embracing spirituality after surviving domestic violence, narcissistic abuse, and parental alienation, 
Marnie is a co-author to numerous anthology books. Now, I do have to say this. You've just heard me read this about you. There are many achievements and many aspects of your life that you no doubt take a joy in and can have a measure of respectable pride. But you're also a mom. Mm -hmm. And a blow to life can be the pain of not being able uh, to be as close to a given child because of an abuser. Mm -hmm. You've experienced that, parental yeah. alienation. Yes. So many people are experiencing that and will get a chance to see this uh, when it's published and put out for the public to see. But in this moment, describe for those uh, who may not know what it's like, what has par parental alienation been like for you? Well, it's been probably the most devastating of all the abuse and the experiences that I have had. You know, I've lost my home. I lost all my money. I lost my safety and security. I lost my friends and neighbors. You know, I can handle losing all of those things. But when I realized parental alienation was part of what was going on here, that was probably the most devastating. So I was going along just fine with, with um, we, we had two children. Even when I chose to divorce my abuser, I immediately reached out to him and, and you know, said that we really need to both be parents to our children. You know, luckily they were adults, but I would never have got, and I still don't get in the way of our children having a relationship with him. Um, you know, even though he was extremely abusive to me and actually from a distance, it appears, you know, that he's very abusive to the kids as well, but it's their journey and they need to navigate that themselves. You know, they, they, we all have different relationships with each other just because I needed to get away from that relationship. Doesn't mean that I would ever encourage the children to get away from that relationship. I think in speaking out about parental alienation and domestic violence, I'm hopefully bringing awareness to my children, but also to others about what are some signs to look for and, you know, how do you respond, you know, as opposed to just reacting, but it, it all parental alienation with a lot of people and myself included is a very gradual process. Um, I believe that the abuser was working on things um, for years, you know, would say, gosh, you know, your mom's, I'm just guessing, but gosh, your mom's um, handling of this was wrong, or um, your mom loves you, but, you know, she's got, you know, she's so busy being a teacher that she, she probably doesn't give you the time that you need or what, which, I mean, isn't true, but these are like different things that can be said mm -hmm. slowly over the years. Yeah. And, and so then when the separation happens, um, they, they ramp up their game. They, they really ramp up, you know, they know the way to destroy you is through the kids. And, and lots of times, if the kids are younger, the, the abuser, and it can be a man or a woman, it is not a gender specific thing. It affects moms and dads, yeah. um, definitely. But where the abusing parent will use the court system to get in the way of the, the visitation or the right. custody. And so I thank God I never had to deal with custody and visitation and, you know, um, splitting, you know, um, time with the kids. I didn't have to deal with that. I, as adults though, I deal with another level of alienation. Um, you know, I haven't had a Christmas or a Thanksgiving with my children for, you know, eight years. Um, he's always monopolized that. Um, it was, you know, it, it, there were, there was no equal consideration or anything like that. And, you know, at, at some point, the, you have to realize, okay, some, well, you, you go along, I think, 
so much time goes by where you think, well, the kids will change. They'll come back. They're just angry right now. You know, mm-hmm. it, this will blow over. They know how loving I am as a parent or whatever, but, but time just goes and goes and, and years can go by where you don't have communication with your kids. And, mm-hmm. and so there's many different um, things that are done and said, depending on the child's age and the, the situation. But basically, it's where the children, whether they're young or adult, align with the abuser. There's like a Stockholm syndrome, um, which, you know, that's something to look up. I didn't know that much about Stockholm syndrome, but it was where a bank robbery, where where the the bad guys, you know, the, the robbers, um, were doing bad things, but the bank tellers, um, in a very short time became loyal to the bank robbers, to their plight and, and supported them and didn't support the, the authorities that were trying to keep everyone safe, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so these abusers, um, the children align with the abusing parent. Lots of times when you listen to like Dr. Craig Childress or Dr. Amy Baker or Dr. Jennifer Harmon, these experts on parental alienation that don't just talk about it, but, um, you know, or counsel people about it. They do a lot of research on it and, and, you know, come to some kind of conclusions. And they say, really, when you realize that if, if you are looking at a young or adult child that wants nothing to do with one parent, that should be a red flag that something is not right, that probably that parent is the good parent and the one that is safe and the one that is loving, you know, that gives the unconditional love that was always there for them. They align with the abuser many, many times because they don't want um, to be rejected from that parent. They saw right. how that parent treated the other parent. Right. Um, and they surely saw some of the aftermath after a separation or divorce. And they don't, they don't want that. And they, they don't want the stress. They, they, um, they don't want to have the abuse come and fall on their shoulders. So they align right. with with that abuser and and it's a it's a calculated campaign of denigration. Mm-hmm. I mean, like they might even say, "Oh, my dad would never say anything bad about my mom." But they but the reality is is yeah, there's negative things said all the time, but it's done in a twisted, you know, change subtle, subtle type Very of subtle. Ins- insidious way. Yeah, in yeah. Which it, it can't be seen. You you um you've experienced uh, manipulation, uh, calculating behavior, uh, many times over, and an abuser is not going to stop with just you. He can he'll he'll stretch his arms out uh, to reach into even adult children. Uh, I can see that that can be possible, but what can be done? You're mentioning that patience is about the only thing. Uh, that can be done? What what can be done? If somebody's hearing this back, what else can be done on their part to hold on to themselves while they're enduring this, yeah. this emotional unfairness? Well, there's a lot that can be done and there's a lot that should be done. And then later on, you find there's a lot that you shouldn't do and that you can't do. And, and so there's a lot of coming. That's a a good one. I'm glad you said that. Okay. There are many different approaches and you can tune into many different channels, read many books of Mm -hmm. where people will offer advice, uh, what to do. Mm -hmm. And, um, but the reality is, is that every abuser is on a spectrum and, Mm -hmm. and, um, so you can't really generalize that everyone should do this. What, what I chose to do in the beginning, um, you, you know, well, I still, um, without going into too much detail, of course, yes. Um, with my personal situation, um, I, uh, did catch this child doing something that was, um, illegal. And, and as a parent, you want to, you're still guiding your children, even when they're adults. Without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah. That's all part of it. And, um, but where the, the abuser was, you know, 
accepting of this and, and where, but you know, where I would be like, no, this is, you know, you need to value yourself and you need to, you know, um, do the right thing. And right. so you, that you're giving, was, you're giving parental guidance you're, yeah, you're giving parental gu in this given situation. Uh -huh. Right, right. And, and that was one of the last times I ever saw my daughter, you know, she, she, her dad came and whisked her away. And that was it. You know, I had never, never saw her except for one other time after that. Um, uh, so anyway, you know, what I would say is there's a lot of different things to do. Um, around that time, um, my daughter was graduating from a junior college situation. I was not invited. I was not told. I didn't even know if she was, you know, going to be graduating. And so you end up doing a little bit of mom, dad research where, you know, you're finding out, you know, did, are they going to be graduating? And so I was not included yet some other people that were close to me were included and didn't tell me about it and didn't share. And even family members, you know, just um, uh, they say they don't want to get involved and be neutral, but they're really not neutral if they are supporting the abuser and the alienated child. But anyway, what I would do is I would reach out, of course, sending a birthday card or a birthday gift. And I was left, you know, with all the childhood art projects and, and uh, photos and scrapbooks and, and just um, their, their awards or their, you know, just things that the kids accumulate over their lifetime. Mm -hmm. It was all left. So I, right. I spent a lot of time putting order to all of those things and reaching out to, you know, say, oh, can I drop this off for you? Mm -hmm. Or, and then, uh, you know, there's no response. And in my case, I would reach out on just everyday stuff, just, you know, wow, it's a beautiful day. I hope you get to enjoy your weekend, mm -hmm. you know, just mm -hmm. where there was no big holiday involved or whatever. So, you know, you, you, you know, research says that you should just, you know, keep on trying to reach out, keep that line of communication open um, without a lot of expectations, but just let them know that they are loved or whatever. Well, that, you know, maybe that worked as far as inside her heart. She knows, and I do believe that my daughter knows that her mom was a good person and loved her and all of that. But, you know, she's, she's kind of stuck in a trauma situation herself. So I would reach out like that. Um, I also um, uh, legally had to pay for her college, which I was happy to do. So um, I, you know, would definitely support my children and, and their endeavors and what they of were course. doing, whether uh -huh. she was talking to me or not, you know, of course. And, and it's kind of funny, her dad twisted things around in court and even lied and switched numbers on things so that he could, you know, um, make sure that I was responsible for more than what he is, even though his salary was double mine, but whatever, that's, that's a reflection on him. He manipulates money and, and is constantly uses, uses that, you know, and thinks he's going to be destroying me because, you know, I'm paying a lot more than he did. But anyway, I, I, I supported her. First of all, I didn't even know where she went to college because they, you know, when she transferred to a four year, um, mm -hmm. that was not told to me. That was, I was, even though in the, court order, it says we're supposed to work together on stuff like that. Mm -hmm. they, the abusers don't follow court orders, you know, and, and the people who are victims lose all their money and don't have the energy or time to go take their abuser back to court for such little things. You know, it's big, big things really, but you know, there's just so many, you can't, um, justice doesn't always happen, unfortunately with the, the court That's system, yes. but, um, but true. anyway, I, I, um, I ended up at one point um, knowing, well, I thought she was graduating. It made sense that she would be graduating from her four-year university. Her, her junior college graduation, I, I actually watched it live on the computer, you know, on TV. It was live streamed. Very, very painful, but I, you know, to watch her and not be a part of it. And I was only a mile away from the ceremony. Wow. Uh, but I wow. took a lot of photographs and then I did my usual mom thing. I made a beautiful scrapbook for her with 
photographs and extra photos to give to her friends and family that were there, even though I wasn't there. And, um, and I made sure that I, you know, went to the college bookstore and got things that would be wonderful memories for her, you know, for her college graduation. And I did that also for her four year and it, and that was out of state. So I flew out of state and I, I didn't want to impose or anything, but I did go to her house. I knew where she was to drop off a large suitcase filled with scrapbooks and gifts for her graduation and to reach out with just a note saying, you know, if you'd like to get together, I'm here, you know, I'm at this hotel and I'm here for your graduation. And, you know, I love you and reaching out. Well, um, after that happened, you know, um, the, I was hoping to get a call from her saying, mom, thanks for making the effort to fly out here and for all the beautiful gifts and memories and stuff. But instead I got a call from the police mm -hmm. and the police said, you know, your daughter wants nothing to do with you. So you need mm -hmm. to leave now, leave this state, which, you know, they, wow. they don't have the right to do that or shouldn't get involved in something like that. But, mm -hmm. but they did. And that was, it was very painful. And, um, and then it wasn't too much longer after that that my adult daughter um, put a, an order of protection against me. And so she filed, I guess she, I don't know when it all happened. I, I it hmm. took a while, I guess, because I taught full time or whatever, but you know, there was a knock on my door and she's out of state. I'm no threat to my daughter. I would, would never harm her. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted to reach out to her for her graduation for birthday, Christmas, you know, just trying to reach out. Um, but she is, she was able to, you know, put an order of protection against me and I had to fly out of state. And now I realize I probably didn't need to because of jurisdiction. If I would have had better representation, they would have said, listen, this mom is no threat to the daughter, you know, right. but anyway, I went and, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars later, and the emotional pain of it all and going to court where you're not even allowed to say anything. And, and there were lies, they were lies that were said. And so she, she made up things and I know she was coached, you know, by her dad or by her dad's lawyer, you know, um, but a judge granted her a two year order of protection. And wow. um, that was just so painful. So it, mm -hmm. it, it forced me. So like what you're saying, what, what can moms and dads do when they're alienated? Well, in my case, with an order of protection, there was nothing I could do. I could not, you know, I'm not going to risk my safety or my freedom. Um, you know, uh, I'm an upstanding citizen. You know, mm -hmm. I follow the laws, that type of thing. It was so very unfortunate, but, you know, I, I wasn't going to put myself at risk with that situation. It's just, it's so very sad. Now that order of protection has expired now it's gone, but I've already learned from that, that, you know, it's up to her to reach out to me. I'm not going to put myself in that situation again, um, just to have her, you know, get another order of protection. Um, unfortunately she lives in fear. She must live in fear um, I remember even seeing a picture. I'm not, I'm not on social media anymore, but I remember seeing some pictures of her, um, right. on social media. And so it was, you know, I wasn't stalking her or anything, but I wanted to see what my beautiful daughter looked like. It had been over five uh, years. Understandable. Right. Yeah. And, and, but now those have all been removed, you know, so she's, she's even, you know, going into her thirties, living in fear, um, you know, the abuser has just instilled such lies and half truths. And, the, you know, I mean, it's just it's mind blowing because, you know, in my particular case, I was close to my daughter into her 20s, you know, so it wasn't like she it wasn't like there was, you know, any kind of abuse or negative situation or anything like that. It was it's just mind blowing that that a, a young mind can be hijacked by a bad guy, you know. 
or a bad woman, like, a, you know, a, moms can do this too. So, so I would say, you know, when you're to answer your question about what can parents do if they find themselves in this, I mean, ideally you, you could just reach out and, and try to connect and let them know that the door is always open and that your, that, you know, your love is unconditional, um, you know, but you know, here you can be stopped legally, which really isn't, you know, the, the child doesn't know to, to take their parent to court. That's something that they are taught. They're taught to hate. They're, they're taught to abuse the legal system because that's what the abusers do. They love, you know, the courtroom is like their playground. They love mm -hmm. that kind of interaction, you know, um, even if they lose at something, they still love that they put you through you know, a nightmare and they've cost you a lot of money and time and stuff. They, they kind of get off on that. So I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I have hope that goodness will prevail. I, I uh, have on my website, lots of interviews I've done or writing that I have yeah. done where I, I talk about, you know, just parental alienation and what it is and and um, just to bring awareness because at some point someone will be like you know hey why don't you have your mom in your life you know oh well she was so terrible she you know I I I, who knows what her scenario is or what her reasoning is but um, they might look me up and say well she she doesn't seem like a mean person and doesn't seem, you know, it seems like she loves you and that you've really cut her out. And, you know, I've read about this parental alienation stuff, you know, it seems like this is might be what is going on. And so it might, but it also might take until she's much older and possibly has a family of her own. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. sometimes the cycle continues. So she might find herself as a victim of parental alienation as, you know, an adult you know, herself, and then might put the pieces of the puzzle together. You know, it takes years to unravel all this. You know, what's, this. what, 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 um, what I find beautiful about you as a person and as a mom, and I'm saying mostly this uh, as, a, as a dad looking at it, um, as parents, in other words, I'm saying as a parent to another parent. Yeah. Uh, there is always an aspect of being a parent, uh, father or mother, as in this case, you, what I find beautiful about you is that you haven't stopped being a mother. And some people in situations, they decide that, you know what, um, everyone and everything is replaceable. So, you know, hey, I give up. Um, your heart hasn't given up. No, not at all. Though, though the though it's not being uh, the, the love and nurturing that you're, you're putting out, which is natural for you to do that. You carry that human being mm -hmm. in your body, in your body. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's different uh, for a father who takes on the major duty of taking uh, pride in providing, protecting and guiding. Mm hmm of course, unless they're an abuser, which I'm going to touch on in just a second. But right now, in this moment, I'm saying what I find beautiful about you is that that connection of being a mom who carried that human being, you provided the nutrients needed for that person to be alive today. You have not lost that desire to give them the nutrients emotionally that they need, even if, like their vegetables, or even their milk when they were little, they may have not wanted it. Right, right. You're willing to be patient, just as you did when they were a baby and tried to feed them. You're still being patient to feed them emotionally, even if they don't understand the big picture or right. uh, everything else behind it. Uh, so yeah, I, I find that truly stunning about you, that no matter how many people you have met, myself and others, no matter how many people endorse your book, you're a mom mm -hmm. and your whole centrifugal force of existence is for those that came out of your body, even if they don't understand who you are because they're believing something that's just not true. Right. Uh, right. So um, 
I'm just saying in this moment, you know, we didn't plan to to get down this road. <laughs> I, could, I could keep going, but I'm telling you, you're a unique individual because you gave birth to her. Mm-hmm. And you have a son too, as well, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yep. I have a wonderful son. So you gave son. birth to two children, right? If, yes. Did I get mm-hmm. that right? So uh, any woman that has carried a, a, a child and, and given birth to it and made sure that it was it received its nutrients of love and affection and food and so forth while it was in their body, you're not going to stop and do that when they get outside the body or decades down the line, because you're talking about how you're talking about almost a decade now thereabouts you've been dealing with this or close almost to yeah, yeah almost close and it's a, it's a slippery slope with my son as well i mean my son has had a lot of struggle his own struggles finding his way and he knows that it's his mom that doesn't enable the bad behavior um that it's his mom that wants him to be independent and to be financially you know, self-supporting and, you know, you want to encourage them to be the best that they can be and pursue their own dreams. Um, You know, unfortunately, uh, you know, my son's father, um, he's the father of both of the children, but with my son wanted him to do certain things and compares him to other people. And, and you should be this and you should be that. And why did you do this? And where I'm more of the parent that's just loving and supportive and encouraging and trying to let my adult children know they have lots of choices and options. And there are consequences to some behaviors and some situations that they're in. And, and sometimes they need to learn the hard way as well. And, um, but that's part of growing as an individual. Um, But I am someone that is completely grounded in love and honesty and compassion. And so I, um, I have tremendous hope that there will be light bulb moments and that I will have both of my children back in my lives. Yeah, you know, I guess it, it can't be the way it was. Everything has to be moving forward. They're different people now as adults than they were when they were younger. Well, what I find um, what I find to be something I have noticed is that uh, children are a reflection of the person who loves them the most or that influences them the most. Uh, so um, you, you set the tone as to who your children are gonna be because they spent time with more than likely you. They, but they more, spent more time with, with me. With you yeah. than anyone yeah. else. So no one ever forgets uh, their first love uh, romantically or in the family. Nobody mm-hmm. forgets the first person who really made them feel seen and heard Uh, so they can get camouflaged and and things can get clouded and foggy but eventually the fog will lift eventually the rain will stop and they will uh, come out for sunshine and they'll see that you're the real sunshine uh and you know there what what i've we've talked a little bit about this uh in the in the first part that we did in the previous recording uh but there you're a very intelligent woman who's extremely passionate about her family Mm -hmm. and that can't be hid anywhere you can't hide that (laughs) no matter how much you tell someone um, uh, if someone says to me you know marnie she's not that bright and she really just doesn't have a passion for her family that that's just that's just a lie that's Mm -hmm. not true and what do you do? What do you do with a lie, right? What, what do you do? I mean, what do you do with something that's not, that's not true? You just have to keep living and everyone will see the truth. I mean, you got to keep speaking. I, I mean, I actually feel I think you're doing you're doing a really great job considering what you are enduring. Go ahead, please. Well, I, I was going to say in many ways, I'm, I still try to be a role model for my adult children because, you know, they're going to face challenges in their lives with a job or with their health or with a mate, a mate, a relationship, a relationship, sure. relationship, without a doubt. They're it's, coming. Have, it's coming. It's coming. Yeah, they're going to have happened. challenges in their lives with, with various yeah. things and how you deal with challenges yeah. is, is sometimes 
just as important as the outcome. And so like I could choose to be angry and vindictive and I could choose to just cut them out and say, I want nothing to do with this. You're treating me so bad, whatever. But that's not how I want to respond because mm -hmm. I'm role modeling that we all have challenges in our lives, mm -hmm. but how we cope with them and, and, you know, many people that have survived abuse situations, especially if there's children involved, they go on to write about it or talk about it or help other people that are as part of their own healing. Um, you know, it's, it's just alienation and abuse is just such an unfortunate thing and, and everyone has yeah. to navigate that road you know I think of my son you were talking about my son we you know I was always there trying to help him you know um uh make better choices and and to get on his feet and recently I did help him um with yet another time just to get on your feet not so much with complete mm -hmm. handouts but but really just give him another chance at a at a good life and a foundation and then it's up to him and um there might be periods where i'll go not hearing from him and you know i try not to let that i try not to read too much into that actually i try mm -hmm. to be like mm -hmm. wow hopefully he is kind of you know he started a new job and he's you know getting on his feet and he's he's um, pursuing this and, uh, you know, well, you know, he's, a, he's, he's a guy too, you know, us guys are like that. You know, <laughs> I, I was reminded often by my mom with her, her boys to go like, you know, I, my daughters are calling me, but you, you boys, you know, <laughs> You, you just show up when you show up sometimes. But I will but, you tell know. you, you know, they're, they're, but they that's have, good. That's good news. I was just going to say guys have emotions too. In fact, I recently saw my son, I had a book signing in the town that he is in mm -hmm. and uh, was, you know, planned to see him for a few dinners and of course do a grocery run with him and, you know, go to his apartment and see if he needed anything. Um, but uh, I, I suggested that, you know, I actually went to the dollar store and picked up a bunch of cards that he could mail to his sister. You see, he, when his sister, when my daughter um, became alienated from me, she also, well, and it's very typical for them to cut off that entire side of the family. So they have nothing to do with the aunts and uncles and the grandparents that are from that side of the family. That's just a very common thing that happens when they when kids are alienated. But she was also alienated um, from her brother. And, you know, her father definitely did the divide and conquer and the isolation. So he's isolating both children mm -hmm. from each other. And I've since with research have found that, you know, that's part of that is so that they don't compare notes, that they don't get together and say, mm -hmm. well, wait a minute, do you remember this? And do you remember that? And mm -hmm. mom wasn't that bad or whatever. He doesn't want them to compare notes. It's much easier mm -hmm. for to keep the, the siblings separate. But that was, a, you know, when we were talking about my son, it was a very emotional. He looked at those cards and he kind of broke down because he misses his sister. He wanted, he had a beautiful relationship with his sister all these years, but just like um, his father engaged in the gaslighting and the smearing of my name and all that, um, he did that, you know, with the children. And so they don't have the support of each other. And, and so isolation is a big thing that abusers do. They, they separate everyone from their support system. So, so I know my son definitely still is the loving, emotional, caring person that I always, that I helped raise him to be, but he also had a beautiful light and has a beautiful light um, just for who he is. I think both of my children are such beautiful children. It's just hard as a parent to know that they're going through so much pain, that they're being used in this war that, you know, my ex has against me, you know, he's struggling. My ex just doesn't seem to want to move on. I mean, he has in a way, you know, with other relationships or whatever, but, you know, they, they still, want to keep the narrative going that they are, you know, that they are a victim and that, you know, really 
I mean, it, it must have been extremely embarrassing for him to have his wife file for divorce, you know, and, and he even told me, don't you dare divorce me, you know, more so what it more of what it would look like, not even caring about the deep issues that are there. Um, you know, if he responded in a different way, he might have talked me back into, you know, staying and and maybe for a while, you know, um, I would have the false belief that some things would change and that we could work through this. But, you know, it didn't play out that way. You know, um, I think he was a little surprised that I had the strength to, to get up and leave. But anyway, we're kind of rambling here. But, you know, yes, being a parent is, a you know, once you're a parent, a mom or a dad, you know, especially if you are the loving, caring, you know, um, uh, safe parent, the normal range parent, you know, um, without negative intentions or manipulations and all that, you know, mm -hmm. your love is to the moon and back, you know, you, you, you will you, always you, be there. You have done the best rambling I have ever heard. <laughs> that was, if you I consider rambled. that, if you consider that, was that rambling, rambling yeah. I don't think so. There is someone that needs to hear uh, what you have just mentioned because yeah. they're going through it and they're going through it alone. Yeah. Uh, which is why I wanted to do this uh, with you is because people need to hear your life experiences because they're having those same experiences or similar to it, even though that, 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 that experience is their own unique experience per se, because it's them. They need to know they're not alone and that there is breathing room down the line and how to at least gasp for some type of emotional air as they're going through something in the moments that they're going through. And not right. everything will turn out to be the Brady Bunch, per se. Uh, mm -hmm. Not everything will turn out to be exactly that way. Leave it to Beaver, uh, as it were. Uh, you're too young to know all that stuff. I'm uh, no, 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 no. I bringing, just turned bringing, 60, actually. Just, bringing, those were on my TV lineups. <laughs> so, Don't worry. So. So I just have five, no, no father knows best turnout all the time, but um, there, there is one thing that is clear with your book. And uh, I was going to reference this earlier and I read a, a different section, but I'm going to read this now. Um, I like the way you said this and people need to understand who they're dealing with is not out to unite and provide a home base of love. They're out to what you said, divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. You don't do it my way. I will take everything you have and you right. will be, you will be forever eternally punished, pun punished and mm -hmm. smeared. And everyone that you think you can count on, I will take them or make them hate you or distrust you. Mm -hmm. And therefore, um, what you wrote here is important. And it says this uh, on in the back of your book, it says, when you finally realize that you've been a victim of family violence at the hands of a, uh, a malevo uh, malevolent, malevolent, thank you. I just went tongue tied. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, look at that. I just did it again. That's okay. Uh, malevolent. Malevol well malevolent. I know. Yeah. It's, it's, kick me in the mouth here. Uh, malevolent. Look at that. I'm going to pass <laughs> the word. Malevolent, uh, calculating abuser. Someone you cared for and loved unconditionally. This is the position you were in. And this is why yeah, a yeah. number of people are in that position. Right. Finding the words to understand the, the methodical gaslighting and deliberate smearing you've endured. And then to be able to express your trauma to others can be exceptionally challenging. Now, this, again, is in the back of your book. Mm -hmm. That's the life of many people that come on my Instagram show uh, at uh, Narc Abuse TV. This is why your book is important and people need to get the book mm -hmm. because this is the life of many. Now, again, you're talking about somebody who's calculating, somebody who's methodical, deliberate. A lot of people don't know that's what they're dealing with. Right, right. This is not like accidental and you just, you, right, you left, you didn't do the dishes or something or, or you, you, right. over, you overcooked the meatloaf. Or, no, they or, planned or, this or for a said, long you time. Said, right. That's what I want to touch on a little bit before we have to go here. They've been doing, this is what they've planned to do, including mm -hmm. 
the parental alienation, correct? If I understand right. that. Right, yeah. Okay. I, mean, I just think that- I just wanted to say that and we, we can yeah. touch on that before we yeah. have to go. And you know, people people need to, to learn how to cope. You will feel like you are all alone, that you don't have it. And, and yeah. there's a lot of fear. Um, there's a lot of fear that just is in almost everything that you do or don't do because, you know, and the abusers want you to be fearful. They, they want you to operate under the threat of being taken back to court or losing even more that you have, you know, so, so I think it's very important to still remain vigilant. Um, when it comes to all sorts of things, when it comes to even, your finances. Even during the fear, even during the fear, right? Even you during the be fear. Vigilant. You need to be and vigilant. Don't back down. Don't back down. I, I'm still vigilant now. I'm still very careful about, you know, what I say and what I do. But what was really helpful for me was understanding, doing some research and just understanding what I was dealing with because. I had no I, no clue. This wasn't who I was. This wasn't, I don't think like a criminal. I don't think like That's a very a, good you know, point. I'm I don't sorry, think that's like a, a really good point. So <laughs> yeah. some people, some people get they get fear, they get guilt or shame because they're thinking, well, am I thinking the wrong thing about this person? Right. But it's just like you said, no one's thinking like that. And now right. you have to try to understand it and start thinking like that to protect yourself. Right. You have, like you what have, would the, do, what would the abuser, do what they do? Right. But go right. On. They are a few steps ahead of you oftentimes, yeah, but yeah, then often, you yeah. start to learn that you can predict some things that could possibly happen, but, but finding the, you know, finding the words, the terminology was really a catalyst for this four book series and what is coming out soon. Okay. So this book is the book of terms to go through. What is going to be hold, coming hold it out? Up, hold it up for us sure. again so sure. that everybody can see that. Yeah. What is going to be, um, turn okay. it the other way. There you go. Right there. Perfect. That's it okay. right there. That's perfect. True Thank deceit, you. false love. But True deceit, what, false love, right. What the next two books will be, will be actually very therapeutic for many of your listeners or, or viewers or people that are going mm -hmm. through and trying to make sense and, and learning to cope with these emotions and experiences. The next book, um, actually, there are going to be two books. I'm trying to get my publisher to release them as a set. And um, they're one, one will be red and one will be yellow again with the masks on the cover. And they're both going to be titled True Deceit, False Love. But one of the books is acrostic poetry, which I found very, very healing. Um, and I kind of have been writing acrostic poetry ever since I was like a little kid. But where you would, you would write a term. So I have you know, every letter of the alphabet, and I have 13 terms or phrases for each letter. It was very hard to find the X's and the Q's, but, but I've made it work. But for example, if we use the term smearing, or let's say, let's use the term flying monkeys. We haven't mentioned flying monkeys. Okay. And All that's right. a term that's thrown out in our community. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just friends and neighbors or family members or coworkers that, um, that, that, either intentionally or unintentionally are supporting the abuser. So they are gathering information, just kind of like the Wizard of Oz, where the flying monkeys did the dirty work for the Wicked Witch of the West, you know, flying around, gathering intel and coming back and relaying that information to the Wicked Witch. Flying monkeys can be a neighbor who might not even be intentionally trying to gather information to 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 let the abuser know this 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 but they are doing it some of them do it intentionally where they pretend to be your friend to get information but then they're just relaying it back to the abuser anyway with this book of acrostic poetry vertically i will write the word flying monkey or flying monkeys. And then with acrostic poetry, you start the first part of your poem with an F. Mm. 
And then you just write sentences connecting all oh, those right. letters. And you can kind of, to me, it's very therapeutic where I, I don't have to feel like, oh, I have to write a book or I have to do this. I can just take this term and I can make an acrostic poem and get my feelings out about that. And then the third book, which I want to be part of the set would be a workbook for others where I would show okay, here's flying monkeys and how you do an acrostic poem. And here are a couple other examples. And I might list 10 terms that they could use, or they might, the, the readers might come up with their own term that is personal to them, that has meaning to them mm -hmm. and that they can get their thought out, you know, cause they're alone. They don't have a lot of people to talk to. A lot of people don't want to talk to you about it or understand you can only read so much or listen to so many YouTube yep. videos. Absolutely. Um, sometimes you need to do some work on healing yourself. And, and I found the writing to be what worked for me. Um, so the third book will be actual a workbook where someone could kind of take some of these terms, pick and choose what is, what works for them? What is an issue that they've gone through? You know, like, um, you know, uh, some of that we, we have one of the people that endorsed my book was Tracy Malone. Yes. She has yes. the narcissist abuse support. I know you have, you know, yes. talked with her at she, length. She's been on the show on our show many times. Right. Uh, yes. So I like, love, love her. Go oh, she's, she's amazing. And Tracy's domestic violence experience she was arrested and put in jail yes. for you know with good intention of just going to her abuser to say listen yes. let's just get along get or whatever along. Yes. he just turned it around and had her arrested and and actually unfortunately um because the courts don't always um take the time to understand yes. domestic violence they can oftentimes side with the cool, the abuser. calm, calculating abuser, you know, who, who is not frazzled in court, who is just very matter of fact and just, you know, comes across as the innocent victim. I was, I was minding my own business. I don't know right. why she got upset that way. Yeah. Yeah. So, for example, then in if Tracy were to take my workbook, she might want to use the word arrested, you know, okay, um, I see what you're saying. No, yeah, I, I was not arrested. That didn't. But, you know, have doesn't have a lot of meaning to me, but in Maybe, her case, so, that might so, be something to work through. So if, uh, let's just say one of the viewers um, is at a point where they feel alone, or maybe they're always crying, they could take that word. They can take and crying. Try to take and, and make it into a poem. Make that, it into that and they it can relate be, that they can relate to or someone right. else, whatever. And what's very cool about acrostic poetry, which mm -hmm. is the the two books I'm I'm finishing up right now, is it you don't have to rhyme, you don't have to follow any rules. If no, you hated poetry like that. when you were in high school, it's very very different. It's just taking a term. So, for example, with the example that you gave, they could put loneliness. The person okay. could write out and say, loneliness is an emotion. Um, uh, and then they would connect it somehow with that O, you know, where our feelings are. And you just, you just are writing your thoughts out. You don't have hey, to follow hey, you're pretty, any you're pretty, You're pretty good at that because I got stuck on the O. <laughs> on the O. Stuck, no, our. The, oh, yeah, okay, you know, I got right? it. That so was you good. Just, that was you good. Just, write out something and get your thoughts out about being lonely. And, and it's very helpful to, to do that. Now, there are other people, if people aren't into words and writing, I mean, I was a mm -hmm. teacher and, you know, um, you know, went to school a lot. So I was always involved with words and writing, but other people might want to exercise and they might get into that more as mm -hmm. a way of release. Um, you want to try to do things that are healthy for you. You don't want to take up drinking, for example, and have that be what you use to numb your pain. But, you know, some people might get involved in, in art and creating something. Yeah. So instead of expressing their feelings and words, they might use certain colors and um, different medium to, yeah. to try to express themselves with, with, art, you know, um, some people get a lot of um, reward just by helping other people volunteering mm -hmm. at an abuse shelter, you know, being there for mm -hmm. other people. Um, but, there's but so is, many different is, things. 
but it is important for them to try to express themselves, right? To, yes, to, definitely. Because to, if you keep it all bottled yeah, up, you right. know, it Don't can just that. eat at you. Right. You you need to you need to do something to relieve your your stress. Um, okay. You know, uh, find a passion that you were interested in, or a hobby that's, or try something new that you haven't tried. I actually. Um, especially before the travel restrictions where they're um, very much into world travel, where I spent a month in India just exploring wow. how beautiful the area was and the people and the different foods and the different um, traditions and that type of thing. And that led me wanting to go to Israel for a month and to Thailand for a month or go, go to Iceland or, you know, you don't have to even go very far. I find, you know, I can just walk around the block and I can yeah. still get another perspective. You know, Pay you attention don't, you don't, to nature. You know, you don't have a block like most people. That's the, no, gotta, no, no, no. I'm in the beautiful, you now. Got beautiful. You got a beautiful block. By the I've way, got a right? beautiful block Thank now. And showing, I Thank you for showing me that the last time we. Oh talked, my gosh! Saying, yeah, well, I do I, take time, and I spend time in the ocean, and I'm I love nature, and so I'm amazed every day. There is something new for me to explore, but I chose, I chose to, you know, when I needed to make a decision, I had to move. You know, I lost my home, I lost all my money, I, I needed to, to, I still had my job, and I, I was close to retirement, so you know, I had. A, a source of income, which was important. Um, but I just said, where do I want to really be? And I love the sunshine and nature. And I love different people, different ethnicities, different cultures. And but I wanted to stay in the United States. So I found the United States Virgin Islands, which is in the Caribbean, was a perfect, you know, uh, middle ground for me. And so I'm I'm thrilled to be here. And uh, so, yeah, I can just walk out my door and if I just appreciate nature and just, you know, smell, just get in the fresh air and the sunshine, that really helps you, me you, a lot. You've got to be thrilled also. Uh, again, as I, I mentioned, highlighted earlier, we're, we're going to have to be going, but you have to be thrilled for the individuals uh, who, have in, who have wholeheartedly endorsed your book. Yes. Um, why don't you read off the names? Do you do you have any yeah, names? Let, yeah, not, let me get, let I me know get I have four, here. but I, th I think you have more than what I have here. Right here. Excuse uh, me while I put on my my uh, no, no, dollar, no, no, my no, dollar no, store no, glasses here. No, but go ahead. What, one of the people that endorsed my book was Dr. Jennifer Harmon. And yes. she mm -hmm. has she was I didn't know her personally before mm -hmm. connecting with her on this book. I'm completely honored that someone with her background and knowledge would support what I'm doing here by writing an endorsement for me. Um, mm -hmm. Jennifer Harmon is a researcher out of Colorado who um, uh, has actually done an amazing TED talk on parental alienation. So um, she writes... Um, and you can find this on my book, but she said many people who suffered abuse, whether it's parental alienation or other forms of family violence are subjected to considerable verbal and psychological abuse and language can cause considerable damage, but language can also help in your recovery and seeing commonly used words and phrases that others have expressed to describe and survive their abuse might be transformative to those who need understanding and another perspective on their experiences. She writes, Dr. Marnie Hill Fodorero's book, True Deceit, False Love, may be very useful for individuals who struggle to find the words to explain what they have been through. And may aid in their healing process. So that was amazing that that Jennifer Harmon, you know, uh, saw the value in what I was doing um, to, to endorse me. Dr. Sam Vatkin um, also wrote the foreword to my yeah. to my book and mm -hmm. um, has also supported me and actually praised me for not providing definitions like a glossary because the research, you know, he's a researcher himself. Mm -hmm. 
He sure. actually coined a lot of these phrases um, yeah. because he was in his attempt to actually in his cases to understand himself. He is a self-proclaimed narcissist yeah. and was very, um, I believe he has to have some empathy because he really wanted to look into the abuse that he was causing, the harm he was causing other people. And in doing so, he needed to have terminology for this. Um, I also have the endorsement from Tracy Malone yes. and um, from Lisa A. Romano. Um, she is known as the Breakthrough Life Coach. She has many, many videos out there on so many different topics having to do with abuse. She's someone that uh, a lot of us can relate to. And she provides lots of advice and suggestions and guidance, um, but also acknowledgement you know some of us just need to acknowledge that someone else understands that what absolutely. we've been through absolutely you know that uh, we're not alone you have you have one other person there i think uh, yeah Tam tamara gerstemeyer sweeney um i've actually been interviewed by her a few times she is an alienated mother of four children and she's been alienated for 10 years her abuser was ruthless in getting her when our children were younger, um, you know, removed from the home and just alienated her, her children are all um, young adults now and, and, you know, she, she doesn't have them in her life. Um, she, she's slowly reuniting with one of one of the children, but it's a slippery slope. It's a, mm -hmm. it's, it's very hard after being alienated for 10 years to reestablish trust and reestablish mm -hmm. a relationship. You know, you, you don't want to talk about the past, but at the same time, you want them to understand what what happened you know it's a natural feeling to want to defend yourself a little bit to let the yeah. your kids know kind of what was going on so anyway she's she's navigating that as well but Tamara Gerstmeyer Sweeney she has a um and she she founded a a nonprofit called Love Dominates a 501c3 and that was her only way of really communicating with her children to mm -hmm. let and calling it love dominates that love you know and compassion you know are, are are what makes the world a beautiful place and so she in her own way her way of coping with the the absolute devastation of losing you know she was a stay at home mom with four kids raising them and and very normal range parenting and and then and the dad wasn't even around much well now the the roles are reversed you know but there's mm -hmm. a lot of abuse going on and the the kids she actually even saw one of her children not too long ago I think it was her oldest child who was like, I don't know, probably 26 or something. And she was hoping to connect with him to reach out for his birthday. And when she saw him, he ran away from her. You know, it was just so devastating. Mm -hmm. But she's trying to, the way she's coping is to have this organization and to role model that, you know, uh, or to bring awareness to this so that at some point when her children look her up or try to put the pieces of their life together they'll realize my mom never stopped loving me that, that my mom didn't be, leave me that proves to be the direction uh most of these if not the majority end up going in is that as time goes on they move through life they start to recognize the truth that was there all the time they right. saw the truth as a child but in between they started to maybe give in uh, to what seemed reasonable, which sad to say they were being influenced or told a lie. Or bought yeah. off. I mean, sometimes the or abusers that too, or that too. That will shower that them with all the yeah. electronic toys and yeah. pay for this and pay for that. But, uh, but, but there's always strings attached to those gifts. Yeah. It's not like, you know, there there's, they create a financial dependence, which keeps the abuser hooked with the kids. And this is a reality. Many people are experiencing this. Again, another reason why I wanted to do this with you is that this needs to be talked about. It needs to be out there because there are some people who don't have the resources to defend themselves or speak up or have written a book or a number of other things, and they need to know that they are not alone. Uh, right. I do need to highlight a couple of things uh, here and touch on. 
uh, if we take a moment, uh, sure. Sam, Va Sam Vaknin says uh, this, this book, he's talking about your book. He mm -hmm. says, um, again, this is praise for your book, praise for true, see true deceit, false love. Uh, the book is entitled True Deceit, False Love. Uh, people can, uh, individuals can get this book now. Uh, mm -hmm. Viewers are able to do that. It says, True Deceit, False Love. He's talking about your book. An astounding feat and labor of true love is what he says about your book. Is the equivalent of panacea. It gives voice to the speechless and empowers victims and survivors by, by allowing them to share in the linguistic commonalities of the harrowing experiences of abuse. This author, Dr. Marnie Hill Fundero, has done the impossible. These are big words he's using for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, 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 he's a college he, professor. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but he, he's not fooling around. I have, you know, I have met him. He's been on the show. And, but, uh, but basically, but, he but, is but, saying that wait, the words gotta, are wait, important. You're getting, wait, you're getting some praise here. Hold on a second. Okay, now. okay. No, all right, yeah. come on. All right, I know you're a school teacher, but don't jump in yet. Hold on a sec. Hold on a second. <laughs> this is beautiful stuff here. I'm just, I find it beautiful. This, the author... Dr. Marnie Hill. Am I saying your name correctly? That's okay. Fodorero. Fodorero. Yeah. Has done the impossible. She collected in a single tome thousands of words and sentences in common and current usage, mainly online. Wisely, she offers no definitions of her own, just keywords intended to lead to independent study. Mm -hmm. Not only that, Lisa A. Romano, breakthrough, breakthrough Life Coach, puts it this way. When you suffer from domestic violence and narcissistic abuse, you are conditioned to doubt your reality mm -hmm. as well as your suffering. In time, you learn to believe that what is happening is your fault. Disowning one's right to honor what one feels and experiences is controlled through the manipulation of words and phrases used by the abuser. Mm -hmm. For this reason, a book such as True Deceit, False Love is a lighthouse for so many who are having to crawl their way out of the psych traumas caused by abusive others, by, by abuse of others. Mm -hmm. Understanding terms and phrases as abusive, as abusive helps uh, uh, a victim develop the ability to identify manipulation before a victim assumes blame for any impending abusive episode. Uh, she does say this, thank you, Marnie, for being a lighthouse to so many. The very fact that you are a lighthouse beaconing to others the opportunity to find an emotional safe place and stop the shame and guilt that the abuser continues to perpetrate, even through parental alienation, mm -hmm. shows that over time, your light will make it through, not just to your daughter, but for others that are in this position, for them and their families. Sure. As you mentioned about Tammy, but I got to read what Tracy says. Uh, mm -hmm. our, our friend Tracy, and it's because of Tracy, we're even talking to each right, other. Right, right. Uh, she Tracy, connected us. Tracy connected you and I, and she's uh, been a great friend. Uh, of course, she has her book, Divorcing Your Narcissist. Uh, you can't make this beep uh, up. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. And her, and her book, Tracy's book is going to be out soon. They're doing the final edits yeah. and it will yeah. be available soon, but her book is amazing. And, and yeah, just really said, quick to put a plug for Tracy, yeah. Tracy's book, Divorcing Your Narcissist. You can't make this up. Aren't you um, in that book? I just want to, aren't you in that? Are you in uh, that book? No, no. Oh, I, 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 might have, I didn't know. I, I might've okay. written an endorsement for her, okay. but, but Go no. Ahead. I'm sorry. You were saying. But about Tracy's book, um, if you are fortunate to be in the position where you're starting to put the pieces together and you right. haven't filed for divorce yet. Um, she provides tremendous information about things that you should look out for, how to pick a lawyer, because not all lawyers 
you know, understand domestic violence or have yep. your best interest, you know, um, and it could save you lots of time, aggravation and money, but she can also talk about the different things depending on the ages of the kids or what situation you're at. But she provides a lot of advice that, boy, I wish I had a guidebook like that. You know, yeah. I didn't, I didn't have resources like that, nor would I have even known to seek that out. I just went with my own gut feeling, which was to get out. But Tracy's Tracy provides wonderful support, not just with her book, but she has groups, she has courses, she mm -hmm. has workbooks out there, lots of articles that she has written. So I would definitely check out, you know, NarcissistAbuseSupport.com. Tracy says this about you. Uh, Tracy A. Malone, Sir Thriver, life coach, speaker, author of the, the book that I just highlighted, Divorcing Your Narcissist. Um, she says this, true deceit, false love is the must, must have reference guide for the many terms and phrases associated with domestic violence. Mm -hmm. uh, as a Sir Thriver, Dr. Marnie Hill, objectively and thoughtfully brings awareness of narcissistic abuse and parental alienation. You know, the world needs to know the good work that you're doing. And one day your children will see it and understand it. Sure. When you begin to heal, you need words to articulate your feelings and experiences, is what Tracy says. This validating volume is an extremely helpful resource for your recovery journey. This is the, the individuals that have spoken in your behalf show that you are the innocent one when it comes to the trouble that has visited your doorstep in your life. But one thing is for sure, you're touching people's lives. This book is gonna expand that, but the, the series of books that you're putting together is gonna take people beyond just, well, being abused and thinking that they're at fault, you're taking them into recovery. Right, right. And, and not just processing what happened and the terminologies, which are, ex they're very important. Although they explain, it should, they explain, a, they explain a lot. Yes, but, but you, I, but you should know that I am not a medical professional. I'm okay, not a all right. doctor. We're not, we're not I mean, I'm a doctor of education, but I'm, I'm not a, a counselor, a licensed therapist, anything like that. I am just a survivor. May of, I say, may I say this? Be yeah. be before we run out of time here, because we've gone almost two hours. I just oh want to say gosh, this. Really? Okay. This is what I want to say. You're a mom. Yeah. You're a woman. And you've been abused. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. Yeah. So you have the right to say whatever. And anyone else that has a problem with that, you have a long list of five different people who are standing in your corner that are all the things that you say you're not. So all I know is, is this. You are helping people. The people that have lost their voice, their voice has been taken from them. They've been mismanaged. They've been misaligned. They've been smeared. They've been all the above and many more. They've been financially drained. They've been emotionally flip, been flipped upside down like a pancake, all the above. They've had their children ripped from their hearts, almost as if it's like it's been ripped from their wounds. Yeah. All of these things have happened to people. You know it. I know it. Right. You hear it, I hear it. They need this book. They need to have a they need to have an emotional centrifugal force that makes sense to them because they've been dealing with crazy. And they think it's them. And right. I, and I'm, unfortunately, I'm really, proud, I'm really uh, proud to do a show with you. But well, thank you so much. I was just gonna say, unfortunately, not all outcomes are positive because people don't have the support or or don't reach yeah. out or are silenced. Or, or isolated, are too afraid, or, or isolated, isolated, or too afraid, mm -hmm. to, you know, and and yeah. malevolent people, that, <laughs> malevolent, yes, <laughs> malevolent correct, malevolent yeah. people can cause great harm to mm. you. So sometimes, um, innocent people, you know, their lives are taken, um, or or they are so distraught they they don't yeah. feel that there's any way out except for to take their own life. Well, I. Fortunately, was never uh, depressed or, 
you know, suicidal or I never had any emotional, I was never diagnosed with anything like emotional, you know, um, I, I didn't struggle with some of those things. I had a good core sense of who I was that gave me some strength that maybe some other people don't have, but uh, it doesn't always have a happy ending, but we want to try to reach those um, that, that have a chance at living a beautiful life, you know, reclaiming their life. And that's part of why I am so driven to, to write and to reach out because, um, you know, it was devastating going through what I went through. But at the same time, I can say now that I'm living a beautiful life. Um, I've, I've, you know, even without my children in it the way I would like them to be, I still can live a beautiful life and hope that I can help others mm -hmm. live a beautiful life. And, and the big thing, and when you look at the dedications and the, the I have a heartfelt note from the author, which is mm -hmm. several pages long at the beginning of this book, True Deceit, False Love, um, I'm reaching out in many ways just to the innocent children that are caught in the crossfire mm -hmm. so that they don't have to have a lifetime um, of, of, you know, being caught in the middle of all of this, that they can reclaim their lives as well. You, Goodness you have, can prevail. Truth you, prevails. You, you, have, uh, you have expressed yourself well. And if uh, you were a judge uh, uh, serving as a judge in a courtroom, you would rule uh, in a just way, uh, because you, you understand what's happening here. Right. You understand who's the victim and who's the, who's the, pre who's the perpetrator, uh, who's the right. predator. You understand it. And you also know, you also know the people who are trapped and don't have the terminologies to understand what, what's happening to them. Right. But I also don't have it in my, um, psyche to cause harm to other people so even though my abuser caused this harm let me, it, let, me let me tell you something if somebody hasn't figured that out of, if if, yeah. if somebody hasn't figured that out about you then you know what poo poo on them because yeah. you are not yes not who you are you're an no, exceptionally I don't wish beautiful her. woman but but i know this much um we were going to talk for about an hour and uh, we've gone a couple <laughs> Here of we hours. Are. Okay. And I do want to tell you this um, before I have to go to, to do my next show here on Narc Abuse TV uh, on Instagram. I, I, I'm ready for you for the, our third in, in the series here. We have uh, done two. Uh, this is the second one. Next time I want to talk about the individuals that want to write and get it out. The individuals who want to put it, put their pain on paper and get it out and help mm -hmm. others, uh, you can maybe navigate them and show them some pointers so they themselves can be uh, authors and so forth and get these things I would out. be happy to. Uh, Our we'll we'll matter. talk about that. We'll talk about you as a speaker and a number of other things. And there are a few other things that I didn't say to you today, that uh, questions that I wanted to ask you that we're going to uh, delve into the next time we get together, which will be uh, in a month from now, we're right. going to get together. But um, listen, you are worth being around and your children uh, will appreciate that as time goes on. Results do mean a lot, but you're making a lot of results in people's lives. And Marnie, I am, I am so happy that Tracy uh, said that you and I should get a chance to meet. Um, she's been so kind enough to to talk and be on my show, but she knows the type of people that I am just, I'm excited to meet. And I am so happy uh, that she told me to meet you. Uh, I could listen to you talk about life, uh, not just your experiences, but life uh, for two hours. <laughs> I, I, no, I, no, I can do it because I find you to be an extremely humble kind, compassionate, very, very firm for what is right uh, and what's just a uh, type of a woman. And uh, people should truly go out and get your book because you, you have put a lot of work into helping other people. And uh, a number of people are going to figure that out, not only when they get, their book, get, get your book, but when they see this and the series of three of how, who really is Marnie? 
I should just name I should name the video series that <laughs> who's who's Marnie because you are showing anyone that's doubting who you are, you are leaving a legacy as to who you are in, in this video series. And I am honored to be the person on the other end to be able to do that with you. I've got to go. And thank you. Uh, thank now. you for the opportunity. Uh, and thank I you just, for having a platform for people. <laughs> yeah, listen, I listen, you you just made our platform a whole lot better. And when this gets published, it's gonna be even more. Uh so um Please, uh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, a low budget show is what we brag about. Uh, my daughters and myself, all three of us do this, uh, put this together uh, with high caliber guests. So low budget show, high caliber guests. We say that all the time. And uh, uh, um, I am so happy uh, to have met you. Uh, I, can't, I can't imagine what the next one's gonna be like because they just keep getting better with you. I get, I get to learn so much more. And you're very positive. You're very encouraging. You know what? The world is a better place because of your positivity and your attitude. Uh, and thank you so much for everything. And uh, you are a woman to be reckoned with. And someone who doesn't appreciate you now, their eyes are going to be open because you are a beacon for, uh, for good things. You're a beacon for what is right. Thank you yeah. so much. Uh, we'll get thank together you. again, and we'll see you in a month. Okay, Bye, everybody. Good. Thank Take care. Bye-bye. Go get the book, by the way, everybody. Stop. Don't put the pizza down and go get the book. Stop being cheap. Get the thank you. Hold that up there. Yeah, hold it. Uh, hold it right there. Uh, true deceit, false love. Yeah. Uh, invest in your future, not your belly. Get the book and buy one for your friend. All right. Thank you. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.